You guys are probably wondering where George is. He's actually in Geneva right now. Let's check out what he's doing. Okay guys, uh, day one of our trip to Watch Days Geneva. I I'm here at the American Airlines Lounge at Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. And I uh, got a couple hours to kill. Um, uh, as those of you who know me, I'm chronically early. Um, and those of you who know me know what I'm probably wearing right now, and it would be the Rolex GMT Master II. Uh, perfect travel watch. Um, brought some other stuff with me, but um, uh, again, just day one. Just wanted to let you guys know what's up and where I'm going, and uh, more to come. For over 40 years, I have been in this business. The trust my clients have placed in me is so important. This is about continuing the growth of this business on that trust and the standard we have set. This is about what it takes to stay on top. Here we are in business class to keep grow. Um, these are lay flat seats, which is absolutely wonderful. You have your own little cozy area. Um, we have our flagship Shinola dop kit, along with uh, Bang & Olufsen headphones. Uh, and first class is first class, man. Um, if, 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 if you can, um, absolutely do it. Um, I highly suggest somebody else pays for it. Um, that seems to be uh, the, the way to go. I don't, I don't think anybody in first class has paid for their own ticket. It's all like right off stuff. But um, uh, anyway, uh, hey, thanks, Oliver. Appreciate it. It's been kind of a rough road uh, to Geneva this time around. Uh, my initial flight out of uh, Heathrow got canceled. Um, initially, I was going to have to spend the night in London. Um, I talked to a very uh, uh, understanding ticket agent and she got me on an eight o'clock plane. So it was literally an eight hour um, layover in uh, Heathrow. Um, already missed two meetings, have them rescheduled. Not that I had any room in my schedule, but I'm gonna make it work. All right, so we made it to Geneva. Um, right now it is 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I have a few hours until my first meeting. But uh, I have to do what I always do my first, uh, when I first hit the ground in Geneva is uh, go check out the Swatch Boutique. So uh, I'll let you know what I come back with. So every single time one of us is traveling, we always stop by a Swatch Boutique if possible to uh, see what they have as far as moon watches go. Um, uh, between Ryan and I, we probably have had them all at one point or another. So um, right now, uh, their collection was a little bit redundant. I was maybe hoping for some sort of um, uh, moon gold, but, um, uh, but not to, always good to see a Swatch Boutique in Geneva. Okay, so right now I'm standing on the corner of the Rue de Mont Blanc, which is kind of the, uh, the main thoroughfare where all the action happens. Uh, I'm going to try to give you guys an idea of the scope right now. I just wanted to share what a lovely view they have right here for this pavilion. Um, Geneva, again, is just one of the most stunning cities. It's such an old world, yet modern. I just absolutely love it here. One more shot of this amazing scenery here at Watch Days Geneva on Rue de Mont Blanc. And then here's the pavilion where all the lectures are gonna be. So this is the main pavilion where a lot of the vendors are showing.
So we sent George Reed over to Switzerland. Normally he goes with uh, Elizabeth. We're looking for a couple more independent brands. So a lot of these independents have been rising to the top lately. FP Journe, you know, things like that. Um, so we're basically sending him out there to kind of go over and meet with some of these brands, see if we can get somebody to basically sign with us and come to our store. Since it's becoming a lot harder to get some of these bigger mainstream brands in here. Uh, so this is gonna be a great, uh, addition for us and I can't wait to hear back some of the information some of the meetings he went through while he was out there. So uh, first meeting down um, I met with a company called uh, Reservoir uh, founded in 2016 by uh, Francois Moreau. Uh, fascinating little company real passion project for this guy. Um, instead of retiring decided to start a second company and uh, really follow his passions. Uh, you're talking retrograde minutes jumping hours uh, power reserves but done in a really really cool way. Um, you can really see his inspiration from a uh, cars to aviation just uh anything any instrumentation that gives you uh instantaneous uh information is what he was going for so really cool company um we'll see maybe we'll do something together so i was texting with george he was in geneva um for geneva watch days and he kind of was like what everyone's saying about rolex after the acquisition it's all the big talk he said people actually aren't talking about it as much as he thought they would i'm like did everyone get all the chatter out last week um but he also said the vibe which i hadn't really thought of is overall that Booker or Rolex had to buy Booker because otherwise a competitor could have come in and taken all of those points of sales and run all their boutiques. The, the recent uh, acquisition of Booker by Rolex, uh, I mean, that's a big thing that just happened in our industry. I mean, I think initially I was shocked because Rolex has very much said, like, we're standing by our dealers, right? We're right. never going to go direct to consumer. I do see it from a competitor play. They can't let someone else buy all those points of sale. Yeah. But I do think it would be naive to think that they aren't going to utilize it some way, like you're saying, to their benefit. Right. I don't think we'll see changes right away, but they'll come down the pipe. The industry is changing quick. In the next three to five years, I do think it'll look different. Well, there's been a lot of talk this week about the uh, Rolex deal by Embouchure. And it certainly caught many of us in the industry by surprise. Because Rolex has really been one company that has stuck to their distribution system, which is as a manufacturer selling to a retailer in order for the retailer to sell their product. A lot of other firms over the last 20 years have tried to go direct to the consumer. And the internet has made that more prevalent for these firms too, to, in order for them to be able to reach out to the clients in a more direct manner. It's like they could do so much and they could also hurt the industry a lot, right? right. Um, by, by doing that and they could basically cut out all points of sales and go only through Booker now. Yeah. They, I mean, they could do basically what Richard Neal and big AP are doing right yeah, now. Yes. So I'm not so sure they had too many options. They had to buy Boucher in order for them to be able to control the destiny of their watches in that sense. So it'll be interesting to see if they continue to do this where they start to take their product direct to the consumer. Um, who knows? We'll see. Okay, meeting number two is in the books. Uh, we just met with uh, Laurent Ferrier, uh, and actually I got to meet Laurent. Uh, super cool, I did not expect him to be there, and uh, he was there in the flesh, so I got to meet him. Um, not so much English, and I don't speak so much French, so um, we had a really, really pleasant short conversation, but um, uh, what a fascinating guy, what an incredible company. Um, I'm really, really hoping uh, they decide to open up a little bit more distribution, because I'd love to sneak in with those guys. Um, right now, oh, hold on. Live motorcycle. Um, right now, they are in a really, really nice position where they can't even fill the doors they already have. So, um, like a lot of my conversations here in Geneva, um, I'm just hoping to be on somebody's short list, um, get to know the brands, just to say hi. Um, so, so far, two meetings down and a bunch more to go. Uh, just got out of a great meeting with a small brand called Parallel. Uh, you might remember them from a while ago. They kind of um, quietly. Uh, turned over ownership uh they're independent now and doing some really really cool stuff kind of keeping their dna with those eroders on the dial um, but just doing it smoother better sleeker um really really good collection um, it was great to meet hugo over there um great company and hope to hear more from them soon just got out of my meeting uh i think it was number three or four today kind of hard to say uh great company uh called Trilope. 
uh, beautiful displays, kind of a rotating displays, discs within discs. Uh, great group of guys distributing them in the U.S. Uh, out of New Jersey, uh, very close to where I grew up. So uh, it was kind of nice to reminisce about that. But uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, like a lot of the other companies, uh, not, not really opening any new distribution in 2023, 2024. But um, I, I think we connected really, really well. It was a great conversation. And um, who knows, maybe something in the future. Final meeting of the show. Uh, topped it off with a, with a real crown jewel at uh, Urwerk. Uh, I met with Phil, great guy. Uh, showed me the whole new line, fantastic stuff. If you're not familiar with Urwerk, it's uh, very, uh, very industrial. Uh, what I really like about them, uh, Felix Baumgartner, the, uh, the founder uh, and, and the head lunatic over there is an artist primarily. Uh, he is a third generation watchmaker, but, but primarily he's an artist. So he really takes that artistic lean towards the watches that you don't really see in other brands. Uh, very, very small distribution. So unfortunately, um, I don't see us selling them soon. Um, 150 watches a year. It's just, um, it's just, j just too few there. So, uh, but I, I thank those guys for showing me, uh, showing me all the new, uh, the new novelties, just fantastic stuff. So, uh, I, I guess for now I'm going to sign off for today and, uh, we'll do a little recap and, uh, and I'll see you guys back in the States. We just got in three fantastic Rolex trades, uh, starting with the, uh, Sky Dweller in all yellow gold. So if you guys know this model, this is their annual calendar GMT. Uh, we have this one priced at 42,500, which is complete steal for the all yellow model. Uh, next up, we actually have an unworn uh, black on black ceramic Daytona. Um, so if you look at there, not a single scratch on it, which is amazing. Uh, this one we're probably gonna have priced right around probably like $25,000, uh, $26,000. And last up, this is gonna be the Pepsi GMT Master II. Uh, this is the ceramic bezel, also unworn as well. That's just a little bit of fingerprinting there. And this one will be probably priced around $19,500, $20,000. If you want first access to these watches, we actually have a brand new thing. Uh, it's a WhatsApp Oliver Smith page. Um, so if you want to join that, just let one of us know. We could send you the link and you'd be the first to see these watches, the prices, if they have box papers, the whole thing. Uh, so actually click below if you want to join.